Uh, good morning and welcome to the September board meeting of the, uh, of, of the MTA. We're going to start with public speakers. Uh, Lucille. Now for our public speakers, whom I would like to remind that in the interest of time and fairness to all 42 speakers, we limit everyone to two minutes. Please be aware of the clock in front of the room and the warning light you will see reminding you that you have 30 seconds left to conclude your remarks. Two weeks ago today, I had knee surgery on my right knee. Bandage, severe limp, a cane. Five days out from that, I was allowed to get out of the house. My first trip was to my doctor. Where did I find myself? 7th Avenue and 53rd Street, going down the stairs where Malaysia Goodson died. I'm looking down those stairs as I'm barely stepping down, one go at a time with people brushing past me pushing past me. I kind of saw what she saw. Monday, I emerged from the E-train and found an elderly man at the base of the stairs, his groceries broken and scattered, his head in a large pool of blood. Cops tried to get his name. The ambulance came and the MTA mopped up the blood. It didn't make the papers. After Malaysia Goodson and after all the lawsuits, this shouldn't keep happening, but it's going to keep happening. Thank you, sir. I was also once a poor college student that majored in mechanical engineering at the City College of New York in Harlem. Engineering school is tough and twice as tough as someone with a disability. I not only had to deal with intense subject matter and a grueling workload, but a harsh commute that easily took me four and a half hours round trip instead of two like my able-bodied classmates. I didn't know anything about it until 10 years ago when I became disabled. Because nobody knows, because it's hidden in plain sight, because you don't see people with wheelchairs on the subway. Now, ever since I've been in a wheelchair, roughly 15 years I've been in a wheelchair now, I've been promised that the subway stations will all be someday made really accessible and there wouldn't be any transit issues. And yet, 15 years later, I'm still seeing that there's problems getting to the train. Earlier this month, a federal judge ruled that the MTA violated the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, by not making the Middletown Road station in the Bronx accessible when it renovated there. I live in Astoria, Queens. And I was going down when they were doing the um, Broadway Astoria, the N train station. And I see this staircase going in about a year ago, and I, I yell up, I said, hey, are you putting that in for an elevator? And they said, no, it's just for another staircase.
I am just trying to find out why is Rochdale Village being ignored? We don't even have a ramp. We're not ADA compliance. We have 28,000 people that live in Rochdale Village, 50% seniors, and I'm one of them. Please do something about it. Thank you. Unfortunately, the elevator being out at Bowling Green made my trip, instead of two trains, seven. Really good morning. Thank you so much. Subway rides themselves are difficult for me to maneuver. If I have a seizure, I'm either unaware or confused of what's going on during and after the seizure. I have lost my balance and fallen on the train because I had a seizure, but was fortunate enough to have a working elevator by the time I got off my stop. But not everyone is fortunate to have an elevator at their stop, much less an elevator that works. It's sad to say, but I sometimes feel like society thinks people with disabilities don't lead productive and meaningful lives, and that is reflected in the services that we receive. I'm against all fair and toll increases. And here's why. Uh, Neil, can you pay attention, please? Thank you. They'll be very kind of you. Mr. I Pinero, I, would, I want to remind you there are some rules of conduct. I, I, I know re that. Forgive me. I re forgive me. I've reminded speakers of that in the past. You're not the first. If you would please confine your comments uh, to everything other than engaging individual board members, I'd appreciate that. We know that, Freddie, but they should pay you attention. Don't, apparently. When we please. speak also, Freddie, it's not fair. So I hope that you guys pay attention to every single of us and vote no for the fair and toll increases. That's all I have to say. one of the plaintiffs in these two lawsuits that have been fought in court by the lawyers for the MTA with all of our money, all of us taxpayers, all of our money is getting spent millions at a time on lawyers to fight for what? What would it take to settle these suits? A schedule. 
a binding legal agreement with a timeline for full accessibility by 2034. That's what we need. That's what we demand because it's attainable. I'm almost nine months pregnant, and pretty soon I'm going to be another mom struggling on the New York City subway stairs with a baby and a stroller. Malaysia Goodson died at 22 years old while carrying a stroller and her, and her one-year-old child on the stairs. I'd like to start um, and give her the first part, part of the time my comments by having the cousin of Malaysia, uh, Goodson, just say a few words. I just want to speak from my heart. This is not easy for me or my family. Like, I feel like my cousin should still be here. If she had her one-year-old daughter in her hand walking down these stairs. <laughs> it's not fair. I feel like you guys are raising a price and nothing is being done. I feel like y'all have to do something fast, quick, before something like this happens again. You never know.